Hey guys, so now we wanna see how we can click on each cell and get which cell the user has clicked on. So in order to do that, uh, we need to write a function to detect. First of all, we need to detect mouse clicks and then we need to see how we can actually figure out from the location of the mouse inside the client rect of the window where the user is clicking. So ideally what we want to do is we want to be able to write a function that if we click somewhere outside here it might give us like a, a minus one value right that we don't care if the user clicks here we should give back a zero this is going to be a, the one cell this is cell number two three four five this is six, seven, you know, like an eight. So basically, if we can write a function that can detect where the mouse position is, and from the position, it can either return a minus one in outside the board, zero in somewhere in this area, one in this area, two in this area, etc. Let's see how we can do that. So, okay, let's close the app and go back to code. So first thing we want to do is we want to add a new... Uh, message handler which handles the mouse click so in Windows there's a window message lift button double click I don't want the double click because it's annoying we just want the there's a button up button down the lift button down sounds like a good starting point so let's use this guy and if you don't remember the documentation on this we just hit F1 on that on this to launch the Windows help. So here you can see I got MSDN saying that the parameters, the W param for the message, it's got the control buttons, etc. We don't care about that. The L param is what's interesting. So L param has two values for us, the X position and Y position. So there's a macro, get X L param and get Y. Given this, it actually knows how to uh, decode this long into two separate integers. So we can just copy paste this, close the window, go back here. So what we want to do is we paste it here. I want to say integer X position, integer Y position. And you see why this thing has a red squiggly line underneath because it's not defined. I think this is defined, if you go back read that documentation, it says it's defined inside Windows X.h file. So we can just simply here come here and say include that file Windows X.h. And it's just a file. If you don't want to open it, you can right click here. I'm oh, sorry. You can right click and say open file, open document, which is the same as Control Shift G. And if we say get see here this is where it's defined it's the low word high word etc i mean that's maybe too much details but you get the idea so let's go back to our message okay here's our message we got the mouse x and y position so now ideally what i want to do is given the position let's write a function that gives us the number of the cell given the point so let's create a function uh, ideally I want to create a function that returns me an integer index equals get cell number from point so given a window handle X position and Y position inside the window there should be a function that can give us the values we discussed 0 to 8 for any cell inside the game board or minus 1 if it's outside the game board so let's see how we can write this function let's go back here and here it's a integer get cell number from point give it a, an h wind integer x and integer y positions right this is the function that we want to write and so I think this is where we can use the uh, the other function that we wrote get uh, what was it called get board game board it was on oh yeah it's here on the top right get game board so 
think what we want to do here, first thing we want to do is we want to define a rectangle structure and say uh, if get game board, if that's successful, we can return, we can do some here, we should return minus one because if we're not successful, then the, ideally outside uh, game board or failure. We don't care really, just it's a minus one. Okay, so now how do we detect if the user actually clicked inside our game board? So what do we have here? We have the game board rectangle, which tells us the dimension of the game board. We've got the X and Y of the mouse position. Okay, so this is easy. So we can compare if the X and Y are inside of the game board rectangle, then we have successfully a uh, click inside the, the game board. So instead, instead of writing uh, our own code to do this, there's a Windows API luckily for us that does exactly that. It's called ptnrect. It checks if a given point is exactly actually inside the rect. So we have the rectangle. It needs a pointer to rectangle and it needs a pointer, a point structure. So we want to define a point pt and then we can say pt.x equals our x, pt.y equals our y. This is one way to populate the structure. Another easier shortcut, which is like this, you can just simply say populate it from our parameters. Quick, cool. So now if the point is inside our game board rectangle, then the user clicked, user clicked inside game board. Now we need next to determine where exactly in the game board the user is clicking. So how do we do that? We know that we have the X and Y of the mouse position and we know the dimension of the rectangle of the rectangle of our game board. So so this is the starting point is the rectangle and it, the mouse point could be at the very edge or somewhere inside. So what we need to do actually is we need to normalize. So let's normalize our X and Y. So meaning that it should always start from zero to three times cell size. Let me explain that in a minute. So I want my X to be an offset from the rectangle. So PT.X is the same as X right now. We know that the mouse cursor is always the dimension, the, the location of the mouse cursor is always going to be, if it's inside the rectangle, that means it's going to be always higher than the left side edge, the top left of the rectangle. So simply if we say minus RC to left, what we do in this case is now we're using the left edge as a reference point. So that means how far from the edge of the game board is the mouse. So ideally this can this x value is going to go from zero all the way to the since it's inside the rectangle right to the last right edge which is three times the cell size. So X is going to have a value, and that's what I mean by normalize. X is going to have a value from zero to two, three times cell size. We said cell size is 100, I think. In this case, the value of X is going to be from zero to 300. Cool. All right. Similarly, we do the same for our Y dimension. So the top, right? So how far is the Y from the top edge? Now we got a normalized X and Y. It's going to go from 0 to 300. So now how do we find the column and row of the cell given this? So well, that's a simple math division, right? Column equals X divided by cell size. And since we are using integer division, we're not going to get fractions here. So if X is 0, then we get zero. If X is a hundred, we get one. If X is a hundred and one, we get one. If X is 200, we get two. If X is 300, we get, which is the maximum, we get three. So, 
So now this is going to give us the column numbers, right? Integer row equals y divided by cell size. So now we get the column row. Let's let's actually do something interesting. How do we how do we display this? Mm -hmm. There's no way right now to display this. Anyways, let's let's try before we actually start displaying let's convert this convert to index remember we said we want to get a value from 0 to 8 how do we do that well that's another simple math equation we say return column plus row times 3 so let's let's see i mean let's test this out right now we have two return points either minus one or a value from here right if the point is inside the rectangle cool now we have this function let's go give it a try let's move back to the left button down i think we have said this is where we want it right just for testing let's try to actually when the user clicks on a position let's try to write some some text there that reflects the index. Let's see how we can do that. Mm -hmm. So I need to mention here that normally inside a WM Paint, we have the device context. Every time we wanna draw on a window, we need the device context. And since we're inside the left button down message, we don't have the, the device context. Keep in mind, I want to use a function called text out here that takes an HDC, takes an X and Y, and prints out a string. So I don't have an HDC. How do I get one outside the paint message? Well, there's a Windows API for that, of course. Get DC, right? Given a window handle, you can get the DC. And this also might return null. So if null is not HDC, then we say, okay, we can draw now, but also remember we need to release the dc that's per requirement from windows apis is that once you're done you just release it and that's what we do here so now let's let's text out <coughs> on hdc at the x position y position the user clicked on some text here we want to print out some text okay so this Windows API, actually, if you look at that, let me just hit Control Shift Space. It requires a white string, LBC WSTR, which is a white string. Okay, so we can do that. We can say WCHAR Tim. Let's give it a hundred character size, and we can here display the Tim. And it also needs an integer C, which is the length of the string. Well, that's simple. If we just say uh, string len, string len of tem, that should give us the string. Uh, so this requires the one. There's a, a Unicode version, which is this one, L string len, which requires you to, which return, you know, uses a Unicode version. Right now, the white character is Unicode. So, but now the tem string has nothing in it. So how do we? fix that okay we can say sprint f string print f into this like we can say index equals percentage d and we give it the index value and this has to go into temp because it's a string print f not a print f on the screen so it still have a red squiggly i know why because this requires a unicode string we need a unicode string here and let me see what else is there oh i'm sorry i think this is it should be the wide version i know this is a little bit confusing but this is how we use it or i could have done the ansi version if you just put a here and then you can just make it all just typical character forget about this forget about this that's and then this becomes a string printf. 
and of course this is, looks like this is not defined we have to include uh, string functions for this uh, or we can just say ws print fa all right this works too if this is confusing to you i mean let's uh, I don't know if this is confusing to you. Let me undo all this and just stick to the Unicode version because really it's good to know about Unicode. Let's stick to the Unicode version like this, okay? We have a Windows Sprint. If this is part of Windows API, it, you don't need an include for it. This is a Windows API as well, and this is all we have. So now what we're doing here is we are calling our get cell number from point remember this might return minus one or it might return a zero to eight value i just want to verify some something we don't we don't have any bug that's why we have this code to actually print out on the screen the value of index so let's hit ctrl f5 and see this in action okay click here okay index minus one as I click anywhere here, this is all index minus one. Nice. And keep in mind that this stuff that we draw outside the WM paint, it doesn't stay forever. So meaning that anytime you refresh, it all goes away. It doesn't stay because we're not drawing inside the WM paint. We're just temporarily drawing some by using the device context. So, but anyways, now let's look at our board. If I click here, okay, index is zero. If I click here, index is one, cool. Here, index is 2, index 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I wonder if I can get a value greater than 8 here. I'm just testing my... If I'm really close to the edge here. Okay, minus 1. Cool. So just make sure that I'm just testing my code here, making sure it works fine. If I'm right outside the border, it's going to be a minus 1. If I'm inside, it's 0. If I come very close here, see I'm inside the first cell, it still shows zero. And of course it shows it right, it draws the text right at the position of the mouse. If I'm just a tiny bit inside, then that changes, which is exactly what we want. Cool. So now we have a working function that actually gives us the index of any cell we click on. So we have the basics of, of the game in place right now. So now after we click like that, let's see what we want to do next. I think what we want to do next is if we have a cell, how about we try to calculate the cell size if let's say for instance we want to draw something inside the cell or change its color. Let's start with changing its color. That's an interesting one. So next, what I want to do is I want to figure out a way, given the cell index, how can we give back the color of the function its exact dimension? This would be another cool function to implement. Okay, so let's stop here and do that next. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment or share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel or like us on Facebook. See you in the next video.